couple of weeks ago we had a lot of fun and we made a medieval style spice chest uh, shorter video I know unfortunately the weather was a bit against us so we weren't able to use all of the footage today what I'd really like to do is have a look inside the video g'day guys my name is Ben and welcome to medieval mayhem on this channel you'll find lots of reviews into other people's gear you'll find lots of DIY videos into furniture and equipment and costuming so if you're new here you might like to consider subscribing alrighty so the medieval spice chest as it was was a huge investment for any medieval household and quite genuinely it would have been worth a fortune I have put together as best I can uh, with the resources that I have uh, what I believe would have been involved in a medieval uh, sort of style spice chest and I've had a lot of I've had a lot of chats with uh, some of my historian friends and we've looked at uh, what we believe could have been in a medieval spice chest let's take a look just an interest note from one of my viewers who pointed out that some of the modern pines that I've used to to make this uh, chest in some cases contain some resins and so on which uh, can be toxic so um, if you're going to follow uh, this video and do your own version uh, I would check first as to see what you can and can't use uh, in terms of and, and how that could potentially um, affect you uh, now so based on my conversations with some of my historian friends we've orientated this box around something that would be used on a regular basis in a medieval style whether it be a sort of castle or a tower that kind of thing and uh, it would be used as a basis when you're collecting herbs uh, and so on from the local surrounding area as well as what you may have uh, the money for or the resources for to, to buy in so let's work our way around and we'll have a have a look uh, and this is parsley and this would have been very common uh, in medieval times uh, it would have been brought into the UK from the Roman Empire um, but uh, from uh, historical evidence uh, we, uh, we know this to be uh, a very commonly used herb um, just as it is today uh, so we have wormwood. Uh, wormwood is, is used throughout um, alchemy to my knowledge. I, I don't know very much about alchemy but I'm uh, of the understanding that uh, wormwood is, is definitely used there. Um, but it's also uh, a really good herb uh, from a gastrointestinal point of view and um, I strong evidence that it would have been used in that way um, by sort of people uh, in, in a medical context because medicine and uh, the kitchen were very closely linked in medieval times uh, already we have um, some chives here again just a very common herb that's fine uh, something very easy to gather I'm going to come back to a few of these thyme thyme um, so this is based obviously a lot on what I'm able to grow in my own garden at the moment and unfortunately some of my stuff has been hit a little bit recently uh, whether that's by possums or, or whatever I'm not quite sure time is, is definitely uh, there's a lot of evidence to link that to fairly common use in medieval time um, it's a great herb and I, I love to use it in cooking uh, I cook a lot of um, a salmon I love it with salmon Alrighty, um, sage Again, it's, it's, a, it's a very sort of commonly used plant. Radio, um, rosemary again would have been brought to the UK uh, f with the, uh, the Roman sort of occupation. Um, endive. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how common endive would have been. It's, there's obviously a lot of evidence uh, for endive at the time in, in the UK. Uh, and some of this stuff would have been used in the local production of mead. Um, although there's also a lot of evidence to suggest that mead was was brought in from overseas uh, into the UK uh, mint again just a very easy herb to grow this particular one is tansy uh, I've only recently started growing tansy I find it it's, it's quite a nice and easy herb to grow rue um, rue is, is as much as anything used uh, for uh, controlling pests and that kind of thing um, but again it's, it's very easy quite a robust herb to grow now um, so we have um, peppercorns here to my understanding and then the research that I've done 
uh, there would have been at least four different types of peppercorns fairly readily available in the UK at the time. Uh, cinnamon, or actually a close relative of cinnamon, is Cassiavaria. Uh, I've just kept mine in a bag uh, at the moment. Um, Right, cloves. So um, cloves are, are very much more so linked with uh, with with dental work, and uh, I spent 14 years of my life as an army medic. Uh, so technically speaking, a non-combatant. Um, but uh, so in those 14 years, um, I, I often carried a small bottle of oil of cloves. Um, just for the sort of injuries that some soldiers tended to sustain, uh, especially working around vehicles. I, um, these are cardman pods. And again, um, those would have been very expensive uh, and not readily available just to the sort of um, more, more common medieval people. And lastly, we have nutmeg. Um, so nutmeg, uh, each nutmeg would have been worth approximately its own weight in gold. Uh, and so that would have equated to, uh, you know, a lot of money, uh, a great deal of money for the average sort of medieval person. Uh, I have here um, just the sort of broadleaf parsley as well. Um, but the other part that I have here, and I got recently, um, this is sugarcane. Uh, now we know that sugarcane was actually consumed in the UK, and we know that um, it was available throughout medieval times. Um, however, it would have been very, very, very expensive. And so, once again, uh, it, it, you would have used it from, whether it's grinding it, um, cutting it up very finely and using that in in sort of uh, dessert based cooking or, or whatever um, but sugarcane like this actually comes out as a very thick sort of black kind of uh, treacly uh, sort of substance I suppose um, uh, and the root if you can get hold of the root tends to, uh, to also be quite useful as well um, but here in Queensland um, you, you can procure it fairly easily so I'm in Queensland Australia Radio. So that's 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 the medieval sort of spice and herb chest that I put together based on sort of my knowledge and experience, uh, and also as I say, quite a number of conversations with with historian friends of mine uh, from around the world who specialise in um, the sort of mid medieval period tends to be from sort of tenth through fourteenth centuries. Uh, I um I think this is a pretty good representation of what. Um, sort of junior nobles may have been able to have and a, a spice chest like this would have been worth an absolute fortune um, and so when we talk about treasure in a castle this can very much be be uh, the, the treasure that some people speak of it's not necessarily um, you know big boxes of gold and silver not at all uh, livestock is another form of um, treasure I suppose it's an investment that people tend to have uh, already so um so there we go guys, I hope this was, um, was a good video, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like, subscribe and share, and I'll catch you in my next video.